pass through distillation. Part 4 A Working Example We have defined pass through distillation as an evaporator connected to a gas absorption unit, by which we mean a gas absorber complete with an ancillary desorber. In this section, we will study a system that meets this definition, but comes from an unexpected realm. In large buildings, air conditioning is often carried out by air handling units, which blow air over chilled coils. Passing through the coils is a heat transfer fluid, which enters at 7 degrees C and leaves at 12 degrees C. In the system we'll be studying, the heat transfer fluid is pumped in a circuit through another set of coils in an evaporator vessel containing water at such a low pressure under one one hundredth of an atmosphere that it boils at five degrees C. All the thermal energy that the heat transfer fluid picked up in the air handling unit is passed into the water in the evaporator causing it to boil. This evaporator is part of an absorption chiller which uses water as the refrigerant and an aqueous solution of lithium bromide is the absorbent fluid. There is no air or any other non-condensable gas anywhere in the chiller. It was evacuated and sealed with its charge of water and brine on the day of its manufacture. The only gas in any of the vessels is water vapor. Its pressure is always equal to the vapor pressure of the nearest stream of brine. That in turn depends on the brine's temperature and concentration as shown by this chart known as the During Plot. The x-axis is the temperature of the solution, while the y-axis shows both the temperature and the pressure of the vapor. For instance, saturated water vapor has a pressure of 100 torr at 125 degrees F, and 18 torr at 70 F. This has nothing to do with the brine. It comes directly from the properties of saturated steam. The properties of the brine are presented by the sloping lines. We will begin with the 0% line, that is, where the liquid is pure water. Not surprisingly, the plot tells us that when pure water boils, the liquid and vapor temperatures are equal. But a 50% salt solution by weight exhibits a strong boiling point elevation. At a liquid temperature of 145 F, the vapor temperature is 100 F and the corresponding vapor pressure is 50 torr. In order to make the water in the evaporator boil at 5 degrees C, we need a pressure throughout the evaporator and the absorber of 6 torr. If we choose to use a brine concentration of 64% at the absorber inlet, it must be at 57 degrees C. Within the absorber, the properties of the brine change continually. Absorbing water vapor simultaneously adds mass to the brine, reducing its concentration, and adds energy to it. The gaseous water becomes a part of the liquid, so the latent heat of evaporation is released. A second effect is the release of the heat of mixing. These factors would tend to raise the temperature of the liquid. To prevent that from happening, the absorber contains internal cooling coils. As the liquid splashes downwards, becoming more dilute, the cooling coils must continually reduce its temperature in order to keep the vapor pressure at a uniform 6 torr. If the exit concentration is chosen to be 59.5%, then the exit temperature must be 42 degrees C. The waste heat is typically removed by an evaporative cooling tower circuit with a nominal operating temperature of 30 degrees C. In this example, the desorber is a simple single effect still, but as we studied earlier, the same function can be achieved using much less energy through multiple effect distillation. Regardless of the process used, the desorber must split the liquid flowing from the bottom of the absorber into two streams, a stream of brine at 64% concentration and 57 degrees C, and a stream of pure water. That water originated in the evaporator and passed through the absorption fluid. In this light, we can claim that it illustrates pass-through distillation. But in the absorption chiller, this water is sent back to the evaporator and cycles endlessly in a closed loop. 
The term distillation, however, usually denotes a practical separation technique, an open system involving a feed stream and at least two product streams. So let us see what this chiller would be like as an open system. Suppose we had a feed of slightly brackish water at 5 degrees C containing no dissolved gases and we want to generate from it a stream of pure water. We valve off the return line and feed the brackish water to the evaporator. Some pure water is boiled out and the rest is removed, slightly altered in concentration. Now the system is open. If this change could be accomplished by the turning of valves, the process would never even notice it. It would be business as usual for the absorption chiller, still keeping a living space cool. But for you and me, this is a profound change. Our chiller has taken on a second job as a still and is generating a new revenue stream, commercially saleable distilled water. A refrigeration device has become a separation device as well through the application of pass-through distillation. The connection between refrigeration and pass-through distillation is important. Chillers are heat pumps. They induce heat to flow from an area of low temperature to high temperature. As an air conditioning system, we are moving heat from a 20 degree source to a 30 degree cooling circuit. Internally, the chiller itself moves heat from 5 degrees to 30 degrees. Pass-through distillation features heat flow from cold to hot because it is a heat pump. And you are about to discover a very interesting consequence. Suppose you were the entrepreneur that modified the chiller and found the sale of distilled water was very profitable. What would you do at the end of the cooling season? With the shutting down of the air handling systems, you would have lost your source of free low-grade heat to run your evaporator. How long would it take you to figure out that there is a heat source of sufficient quantity and quality right here? How long would it take you to rig up this piping? The waste heat thrown off by the absorber can drive the evaporator. This is the reason that pass-through distillation can make the boast. Low temperature distillation with half the energy. Yes, it boils the same thing twice but the first time it gets the heat for free from the absorber and the second time it uses multiple effect distillation to have the energy requirement. In our next section we will examine a special piece of equipment that carries out the movement of heat from absorber to evaporator in a very elegant manner.